this shot, um, it's really simple to find natural light against a window. And it's really simple to place a model in this light. And it's just, it's really beautiful. Um, and so, you know, do that. When you go around, you find a light, just place them on it. And it, they don't necessarily have to be facing you. Um, and maybe facing them away. But I want to illustrate something here. There was stuff, um, switches, electrical things, lights, all these things all over the place. There were some things in here. I came in there and cleaned every, I usually don't do, I've said I don't do a lot of Photoshop, and I don't usually do. And here I, I had to get rid of all that. I needed to have a clean, because I wanted to illustrate the lines, right? I want these lines to be illustrated and coming through here. I wanted all these lines to come out, these gorgeous lines. And uh, I wanted all these frames. So I got rid of all that junk. Now it's clean. And now it's inter interesting, right? And this was right afterwards. Same model. And I found this other little thing. And uh, what I really was turned on with, it was almost a silver, gorgeous silver toning in here. Really, really pretty. And I wanted to highlight that. And I decided to come up with my composition and add negative space in this area. And uh, maybe like a frame um, down here, down up here, and uh, um, have her in this one little area and create shape and create something interesting and put her somewhat in the middle of the composition down low. And, uh, and it's more about tonality and tones and how it goes from light to... So it's, I, I just think it's a really pretty image. And uh, some people said that it almost looks like she's in a, a casket. Oh, that's kind of cool too. I don't care. <laughs> it's kind of fun. Uh, you know, don't bother, don't bother me. Um, on this shot, oh my gosh, so chaotic. So much stuff. But I really wanted it. I mean, I, I'm like, I've got to have this shot. Well, how do I isolate this girl and, and, and make sure she pops from this background? Most of the time, you put a girl like that, and, you know, a model like that, and, and they're just going to be lost in all these lines. All these lines. What I did was I put my, my video light okay, inside her dress and shot it upwards a little bit so you can really get a puff of this light inside her dress. That helped the dress. I shot another video light, um, just tipped her on the top there just so that she'd get a little light up there. That now highlighted her from that background. Now she's popping from that background enough and uh, I, I put her arms out a little bit so create a little air and she becomes part of this architecture, part of this line structure and it's a lot of fun. I really enjoy it. Um, so normally in this kind of circumstance she'd probably put pretty lost in these lines, but the, by using these lights, it really helps. I don't use a lot of flash, I don't use a lot of light, but occasionally to have it with you and be able to pop someone from that background, that chaos really helps. Um, here I found this um, uh, lines with a shadow and I just placed her there. In fact, it was across the street and all these cars are going back and forth, but I needed a 7200 to be able to uh, pull this off. And so I had to wait for these cars to keep coming back, keep going. Finally, I just told her, sit there. I think she was there for 10 minutes, waiting for me to get the shot, because the cars kept blocking the way. But I, and and this, this shadow was going away. And I ended up getting all sorts of shots, but most of them weren't right. And, and that shadow went away so fast. And this was the only workable shot. And it just tells it that things happen. I love light. I find light. But the light changes so fast. And uh, this one really worked for me well. And I just told her, stay back, put your, eye, put your head back there, close your eyes, who cares, close your eyes and just kind of relax. I told her to do that from a distance. And she did that and, I just, and, and it worked. I love these lines and I love this light. And black and white helped to just enhance the line structure, compositionally, I think. So uh, this one, um, I didn't have a tripod, but I knew I wanted this beautiful water, ethereal waterfall. Um, and I knew that her light dress, color dress, would really be popped in the dark area here. She actually had to walk across this really, really cold uh, water and go across, and, and she was totally willing, and she could see her hair is like this water. And I had this um, table that was uh, where you sit, like a bench, and I, and I held the, um, the camera against that table and, and did the best I could. I took like 30 shots, one after another. I learned from uh, some other photographers that, that you can pop off shots over and over again that are longer exposure and there are ones that just that will hit and there's other ones that will be out of focus and it won't work so you just pop off one two three sometimes just hand holding them and the, and the first one won't be very in focus we're talking dragging the shutter right and the second one will hit and will be right and the third one will go out again and that's just how you hold the camera and uh, um, and so I think I tried a bunch and finally she got very well uh, crisp, and the rest of it is this long, oh God, you know, this is like a, uh, um, I don't know, 
uh, a few second exposure. So, you know, to get that beautiful ethereal feeling around it. Um, this shot I used an infrared camera. I have a, a, a 20D uh, Canon converted to infrared. And I uh, used a, a fisheye lens, which I always have that on the camera to, to look at, do something different. I got down really low and shot up and I let her just, I took, put your arm there and just do something dramatic for me. And she looked off into the clouds and uh, this was actually a black veil. So it was very cool, very different. These are black gloves. And, uh, but all that just turned back to a, uh, kind of almost like a cream veil now after that. And, and all this, because of the infrared effect, you never know exactly what you're gonna get, but it's really fun. And I think it was the angle um, of me being lower that, that gave her um, a lot more power in the composition. And this, uh, this very interesting effect that's laying almost on top of her there with the railing. So that's a lot of people like that shot. It's, it's a lot of fun. And uh, I, I did shoot this about 10 times to try to get the, a feel and effect, and only one really turned out well, and that's the way it works, you know. And, uh, you know, at first, I've kind of let this go back in my, my uh, categories, and I haven't really come back to it for a long time. And then all of a sudden, I looked at it again, and I realized that I actually really like the shot. Um, the, the focus, of course, is on the cross. Um, and it is infrared also, again. I think what, what kept me was, I think there was a lot of chaotic nature in here, but you really can't see your lips and it's dark. Um, and um, I started seeing the balance of what was going on that I created. So there's this swift, wispy clouds that kind of mock this. There's negative space that mocks this negative space over here. Um, nice flow going on here. And after a while, I almost like the, dr the dramatic feel of it. And uh, it, this is becoming more, this, this image is becoming more, uh, predominant in my, my favorites image because it's like stepping up in my favorites because I, I'm, I'm more appreciating. Sometimes you need to go back to your past um, images and relook at your images to see if there's something that will turn you on that didn't turn you on before. It's, just, it's amazing how you can go back years actually and look at your digital files and go, once you skip something over, but you have a different, you, hopefully you're growing in your compositional skills and what you appreciate and, and, and your style is evolving. So when you do that, once in a while go back to your, your past catalogs and just look at them. And once in a while you'll find a diamond that you skipped over before. And then maybe you know now a Photoshop skill that will enhance that maybe better than you knew before. And then, or you, or let's say you, you took an image and, um, and you did some Photoshop stuff to it, it's just, you know, it just doesn't do it anymore, right? Maybe even like uh, spot color or something like that. Go back to the image and go back to the original and then do something with and then use your new skill. And it's amazing what you can pull back. It's like, like you all these diamonds back in the past. So it's very cool.